Hello, hello. It is chilly all over the country. I'm glad that we could still get together and see one another. It's about ready to start snowing here. It's in the 20s, low 20s. We sent everybody home because we're supposed to be getting some serious, serious freezing rain. In fact, we told Jordan and Jake don't come tonight. And Lauren got over here earlier before it hit. But it is messy already, and it's going to get more messy just imminently here. In fact, we just looked at the weather app, and it says 100% chance of snow at 4 p.m. today. So I guess it should be starting any time today. I, I died this, and I wanted to show it to you first. Today we are going to make a, what did I call it on there? It's a squash, squash book. A squash book. And this is not my original idea. These have been around for years and years, but candidly, I had forgotten all about them. And I saw one demonstrated on the Graphic 45 website. And I thought, that's something we should do. Because this you can almost do with leftover papers. And we can all use ideas for that. So come in really close here, honey. <laughs> And I want to show you this book I put together for Bob, then I'll show you how to do it. And it's being hid by the bow, but there's Teddy. And it says, Best Friends Forever, F-U-R-E-V-E-R, -E -E Forever. Ties in front. And then it opens up like this. And I'm going to start at one corner and show you the squash book is all about Bob and Ted. So there they are in the garden. There they are in one of Teddy's favorites going for a car ride. Here they are watching TV together. I'm going to get that in. And that's just how they look. <laughs> They're watching TV together. <laughs> the funny light is from the Christmas tree. We have purple lights on our tree this year. So, <laughs> and here's Teddy giving his grandpa a thorough washing. <laughs> he got up on the back of the chair, put his paws on Bob's shoulders, and was giving him a good washing. So, I've got a, um, what I used to make this was the well groomed paper pack and the embellishments. And I chose not to use any pictures of other dogs and cats because. I wanted Teddy to be the star of the show, Teddy and his grandpa. But they have in that embellishment pack in the um, in the ephemera. I can't seem to hang on to it. They have all kinds of wonderful embellishments. See right down there, we have paws. Um, let's see, my favorite people have paws, and then we have the love and the puppy paws up there. Down below, we have the puppy paws and the swirly. Over here, it says hot dog and puppy paws. And up here, it says best friends for forever. But didn't that turn out cute? I think Bob's going to love it. I hope that. I hope that he loves it. I think he will. And then it all folds up into a tidy little pack that ties off. Bob will never be able to fold it back, but that's so cute. <laughs> that's okay, I don't mind. <laughs> I'll tie it for him every time as long as he likes it. <laughs> and this is how this is just a little squash book and see it's only if you know if a person wanted to carry these around in their purse you know for a little brag book with your grandchildren or your pets or your kids what a wonderful little present this makes um instead of just cardstock i used chipboard because you guys know me i like things to be sturdy so this is a nice sturdy one, and we're going to use cardstock on ours. So 
I'm not going to embellish another one because I actually don't need another one right now. I'm going to go ahead and just make it up and then maybe I'll finish it up for Lauren's birthday or something and make it about her and her cat. But um, I'm going to show you how to put the book together. To do this, you're going to need three sheets of paper. It's nice if two of them match and one is a coordinate, but you can do whatever you like, really. I'm going to use the same ones I used. So I took these two sheets, the floral sheets and the puppy paws on the back. It has a pretty black flourish and then puppy words. And you're going to need two pieces of chipboard and you're going to need a little piece of ribbon. That's what it takes to make a squash book. The tools you will need, you're going to need your paper trimmer. We're going to start by cutting these papers to eight by eight. I'm going to trim that strip off as I usually do because if I don't trim it off, I will inadvertently count it in my measures and then that will make me upset. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to open this up. I'm going to try for a while working with this glass mat on my desk and see if I can take better care of my table. Now, the question is, the glass mat is just kind of an awkward size because it's a 12 by 12, so my paper cutters and things don't sit squarely on it. So the question will be whether I can put up with having it be an odd size. So... I'm cutting both of my floral papers to eight by eight. And I'm going to cut this puppy paws paper to eight by eight. I'm going to move my paper cutter out of the way. I'm going to get my scoreboard up here. You guys aren't going to believe how easy this is to make. And I'm going to score each one of my papers. I will start. Now, just a warning about Graphic 45. This is not adorable scoreable from Hunky Dory. You cannot push really hard on this paper because if you do with your scoring tool, you're going to push right through the paper. Does that sound like I did that today? I did that today. So now what I'm doing is my scoreboard has that I can line up between the two, between the uh, marks for a six inch. And I'm starting at one corner, and I am, it doesn't have anything to do with six inch. I'm just looking for one line that can follow all the way. I'm scoring from corner to corner. And the next one, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to score it at four. I'm going to score it again at four. I'm going to, I'm just using my six because I know that I have a line I can match to on the other side. And I'm scoring my side to diagonally across the paper. And one more, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. Score it across the paper, turn it a quarter turn, and score it at four again. Line it up, whatever your scoring tool is. 
and go corner to corner. Okay, I'm going to move my scoring tool. I'm going to keep the, the bone folder for now. And I'm going to go ahead and fold this. And as I do, I'm going to make sure that my score lines are all allowing me to line my paper up really nicely. If I need to make any corrections, this is the point in time to make them. So I'm going to push it down with my bone folder. I'm going to fold it and burnish the edge. I'm going to come in, fold it the other way, and burnish the edge. Now, I actually like to do them, do the um, folds both directions. I think it makes it easier to put the book together if the fold lines are flexible and easy to work with. I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to fold on my score line. If I need to make any corrections, this is a great time to do it. What I mean by corrections is maybe something doesn't line up exactly. You can actually go ahead and fix it while you're at it right here. I'm going to fold them back the other way. Hi, Kathy, girly girl. Oh, yeah. It'd be, it's not the kind of, you know, these little squash books are not the kind of gift people feel like they have to reciprocate for. You know, it's just a fun little remembrance. A few more people coming in here, so I'll probably show you our book again in a little bit, our decorated one. And unlike the design on YouTube, I'm actually folding all of my papers both ways. It just makes it easier. You don't have to focus so much. Okay. So. All right. I'm going to grab my papers. And I am going to... You have to um, look and see if your paper is directional. You'll want to make sure that your writing is all going the same direction. This, fortunately, the writing goes every which direction, so that makes it easy. When I selected my papers from the um, well-groomed collection, I chose papers that had patterns on both sides rather than cutouts and things on both sides. Now I'm going to position my papers so that the full four inch squares, there's some that are halves, okay? I want two full four inch squares on the corners of my book. Okay, so I'm going to make it look like that. I want my puppy prints going the right direction. And I'm going to go ahead and put some glue down. The example I saw, she taped first and then glued. I will tell you, this Cosmic Shimmer will hold this. It doesn't need, we don't need to put tape down ahead of the glue. It'll be just fine. So I want to make sure that I have a full square here. And I'm going to position my square to fit right in here, right in the full square. 
and I can try folding around it, make sure that everything's going to fold around it fine, and it sure looks like it is. I'll turn this around. Hello there. It's not something on the floor. It was what? Oh, your phone. Oh, good. I'm glad it wasn't my phone. <laughs> Just for a change, it wasn't my phone. And I'm going to glue this here. It doesn't matter if they're both underneath or they're both on the top. What I mean is I could have let four squares of the black show and less of the floral. It doesn't matter which way you go. Either one is fine. <clears throat> I'm going to pop this in here. Hi, Roberta. Okay. Now let's see if we can fold these up. Let's see. So I'm going to pull this together first in the center. And then I'm going to pull these together. Let's see. Here we go. That one. That one. And that one. So I've got it all packed up there. Now I'm going to go through and I'm going to burnish those seams really good so that it will lay down nicely. And just make sure everything's laying real square and nice. Now don't be afraid to burnish this hard. You do want this to lay down in a really nice little packet. I'll finish that side, flip it over, come back over here and really press these down good so I can fold it out and I can fold it back really nicely and it goes right back down okay all right next we're going to put our chipboard on and we're going to go to our outside edge for our chipboard. So I'm going to, I'm using these pre-cut 4x4 four four, because why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> so much easier than cutting chipboard. You can get a whole pack of this. Can you link that for me, honey? They're um, search chipboard sheets. And then link the four by four. There's, I'm just using the craft colored one. If I wanted a black cover, I could have put a black one on if I wanted, or a white cover. I just used the craft and then covered it with paper. Um, let's see. Oh, you're getting the other chipboard sheets bottom there. Yeah. Next one. There you go. I'm going to take my ribbon and I'm going to find roughly the center. No pun intended. <laughs> Roughly the center. Flip this over. I'm going to put another piece of chipboard on. And <laughs> we're going to be done in 
30 minutes or less today, but we do want to look at our Christmas cards. So that will be good. My other piece of chipboard on here. <laughs> I'm going to have been fooling around with this, so I have some little cut pieces of paper here. So I'm going to grab a couple of these cut pieces I already have. I love that puppy paws. Let's see if there's another one to be using here. Yeah, there's another one. It's already pre-cut. So I'm going to glue this onto my chipboard. How easy is this, guys? It's so fun to come up with such a cute little gift. I want to show you Bob's again. I'm so excited about it. Margie got her tea box today. She loved it. So that was fun. Nice fun to make something for somebody that they really, really like. <laughs> and then I'll flip it back over and glue my other piece in place again. If your paper is directional, you'll want to watch dire which direction things are going. The most directional piece I have is those little puppy paws. And they, even they are pretty forgiving. But I'm going to assume that this is my top. <clears throat> oh, it would be a nice thank you for your pet's veterinarian. <laughs> That's a great idea. And you guys noticed that I put the chipboard down before I put, or excuse me, I put the ribbon down before I put the chipboard in, because that ribbon will help keep it from pulling through. It, you know, if I just had cardstock there, the ribbon could eventually pull through the cardstock, but it's not going to pull through the chipboard. Get a little bit more right out to the edges here. My book is ready to put my photos in. Really wants to go this way. Put the puppy paws up. And I really have room for at least four full photos. The squares on my book are four by four. So I'd recommend cutting your photos to three and three quarters. I had the extra photos, so let me lay this out again. Here's a picture of Teddy sleeping with his head on the armrest, which he always does because he needs a pillow. <laughs> Here's another picture of Bob and Teddy hanging out.
Here's a picture of Bob and Teddy playing with a toy. So I really have four places for flat photos here. Here's a picture of Teddy as Mailman Ted. Then I could, if I wanted to, I could put more pictures in some of these areas that fold as long as I pay attention to which direction the fold lines are going. So I could put one there. I could put one here. I just have to pay attention when I fold it up that the fold lines are going in the right directions. I don't know about these because these are folding the wrong way. So, but I could, if I wanted to, put more pictures down inside. I kind of liked the running the pictures diagonally across my book and then embellishing the others with fun things. But I could do this. Then I'd glue my pictures in place, put my embellishments on, and my little book would be finished. What do you guys think? Do you like the idea of the squash book? Have you made these before? If you did, what'd you make them for? How'd you use them? This is not a new technique, but it is a really fun technique. And it's easy, and it's fast. You saw we just made one beginning to end in 26 minutes. I would still need to put photos in it and my little embellishments on. Okay, so we add another five minutes for that. And it's just such a cute thing to do. You can do it with eight by eight paper. You can do it 12 by 12 and cut it down. You can add additional layers of paper inside if you want to. Whatever you'd like to do. My ribbons off a little. And it's just such a fun, cute, compact little gift. If somebody wants to carry it around as a grandma's brag book, so easy to do. As It'll fit right in her purse. The chipboard's going to help keep the, the booklet from getting torn up. So I love that. Has anybody made these before? They like said it's not a new idea. It's, a, it's an older idea, but what fun. And so easy to do with the... I, I got to say, for the, um, for the pet-themed ones, I really, really liked the ephemera pack i used a lot of the um, ephemera without the pictures already but there's still some great pieces in this pack that could be used in another book this one says love changes everything that's a great one to use if i wanted to use these fun and funky um, dressed animals i certainly could they're just the right size there's little frames I could put over the photos. There's a little tag with the word love. Here's a little tag with puppy paws or kitty paws. Here's a banner that I could take a bold marker and write my own. I, in the one that I saw on YouTube, she actually used this big clock and, and let it fold right into the into the chipboard book. Here's another fun frame to put right around one of your photos. This one's a little too big for this project. We have swirlies. We have my favorite people have paws. There's another my favorite people have paws. A little black rose. Here's some of the roses paper that I was using. I think you could use adorable, scorable, Betty. It would take some serious um, 
you it would take some serious scoring but you could use adorable scorable for this and you could use mattastic for this um, my favorite people have paws again this one's a little oversized unless you cut it down if you cut the filigree off this one says well groomed so hello beautiful forever puppy paws a little heart a little black rose so i just wanted to show you there really are a lot of um a lot of pieces of ephemera that are not necessarily the dressed animals if you prefer if you want the dressed animals there are some adorable ones in here there's the top hat dog so there you go that is what some of the ephemera in the package looks like we did post some ephemera to the store today so there is some ephemera for the well-groomed collection i'm going to show you my bob book again for those of you who weren't in here that's a picture of teddy who's laying on the back of the sofa at the beach that's the ocean you see out behind him that's so blue <laughs> And it says, um, best friends forever on the cover. And I think I said, but I may not have. You can decorate the back, too, if you want to. There's my Bob and Teddy in the garden. And Bob and Teddy, in one of Teddy's favorite activities, he does love to go in the car. <laughs> Here's Bob and Teddy watching TV. <laughs> and there's Teddy giving Bob's ears a good washing because he felt like Dad needed that. So he's got to have a good ear washing. <laughs> and then the whole thing just folds up really easily and ties back off. Okay. You guys have any questions about the squash book other than can you use adorable scorable? Yes, I'm sure you could. <laughs> A little booklet to give the mailman, you know, these would be great for just little remembrance gifts for the different people in your life that you don't want to feel obligated. Friends books and, you know, um, baby shower books and you know, all kinds of things. There's just a million things you could do with these little booklets. And you saw, it's a 20 minute project. Once you get going with them, they're probably faster than that. So. Yes, I think you could. It will be firm. I would not think you would need to use chipboard covers on it if you used adorable scorable. Because that adorable scorable is 300 GSM, so I think it would be thick enough. But I would believe you could do that. It probably, um, yeah, I'd cut it to, I'd still do the 8x8 eight eight and work it up in the same way. It's going to be really, really important if you're using something as heavy as adorable scorable that you're scoring all those seams really well. Any other questions? Let's take a look. I brought, I promised to bring the Christmas cards out and show you the Christmas cards we've received. So I have brought those. I did not bring Bob's cards because when we sat down, oh yeah, a little hostess book, great idea. Yeah, a birthday card you know, for somebody, and you could put pictures of them at different ages in there. <laughs> you could make a card into it, you know, make it into a card. I did not bring Bob's cards with us. We'll bring those probably after Christmas when Bryce and I went to open the cards today. We waited to see if Dad was going to wake up. He slept right through it. So we didn't open his cards. He needs to open those. But I will show you the ones we have received. So starting out here, hi, Irene. 
Here's the card from Kathy Simpson. Kathy, girly girl. So pretty the way she put it on the silver and then applied the stickles. Love her little dainty bow in the corner. Super cute. Here's one from Catherine with Parent Noel. There's the French Santa. And this one is from Betty G. Loved your work with the stickles too, Betty. Really pretty. And the little layered topper in the corner. Very fun. It was the year of Anna Griffin. Here's a Anna Griffin card. And this one was done by Kim R. Katie and Kelly. And we got a fun picture of the family with Kim, Katie, Kelly, and JB. <laughs> I love the way this um, candle, this is one of the Hardy Craft toppers, I believe. And it looks so pretty in front of the mirror board that Laura Hernandez cut. Isn't that beautiful? Just a little simple background. I like her corner she put on there. And then she made that mirror board backing and the candles in front. So pretty. That sounds like a job, Irene. Isn't that beautiful? Here's one. I believe this is from Roberta. Yes. This one's from Roberta. Look at those beautiful photo corners and the, the borders with the mirror board and then Roberta's topper. Isn't that pretty? <clears throat> beautiful. Here is a decorated tree. I always love these. I love to decorate them and I love to receive them. This is from Adeline and Lacey. And her decorated tree and stairway. So pretty. <coughs> Here's another Anna Griffin card. This one's from Sharma. Isn't that beautiful? Gorgeous. Here is, we really remarked on this one. This is unique and fun and different. This is from Mary T., Mary Thomas. And look at this beautiful card she made. Looks like she must have an ornament die and an ornament easel. Beautiful. And then she's inset these green tiles. I love the pattern she did. And then it applied her flowers. It's just gorgeous. Really pretty. Bryce, Bryce and I commented on how much difference it made in this card from Mary P. Look at the uh, how much it added to this card that she put the blue inking around the um, the scallops on this card. It just makes the card that she did that so beautiful. Really, really beautiful. Really beautiful. And that one was from Mary P. Here's one from Martha G, Martha Gentry. I love these. I'm not sure what these bubbles are, but I love them. They're beautiful, the little glittered bubbles. They really add a lot to this card. Gorgeous, Martha G. And this one, so pretty. This one's from Elsie in Norway. Love the colors. 
Love the sparkly treatment on the trees. Love the choice of papers together. Really pretty. We both commented on this one, too. This looks like a lot of work, but it sure was worth the work. It's beautiful. This is from Pam Hatch. Look at this wreath. I'm thinking that might be, I don't know for sure, but it might be from Heartfelt Creations, that wreath. And she's hand-colored all the wreath components. It's really beautiful. Then she's used really lovely background paper for it, too. Really, really pretty. That was from Pam Hatch. Here's one from Susan. This looks like this is a uh, Anna Griffin. This is from Susan Reed, the one who joins us in the classroom sometimes. She hasn't been here for a while. Here is a beautiful thing. <laughs> Diane knows I love the puppy cards. And here's that puppy in the Christmas tree that Hunky Dory does every year. It's always a variation on a theme, but there's that puppy in front of the fire. Beautiful. Hello, Laura Hernandez. We're just looking at some of the Christmas cards from this year. Beautiful. I'll bring Bob's later because he hasn't opened them yet. This one. This is actually a thank you card from Roberta. But I opened it at the same time. So we read it into. Pretty, huh? The little squirrel and the chickadees. And I do so love those donkeys. Now here's the donkeys, and this is from Annette. And yes, it's a shaker card. So we have all kinds of fun stuff in with those donkeys. <laughs> and then finally, we have this one's from Brenda, and she's doing that hardy craft topper in front of. The poinsettia background, the season's greetings, isn't that beautiful? Really beautiful. So that's what I have so far. Really gorgeous. Okay. Do you guys have any questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom? I guess before we get away, I should promote the book again. The book is done. The kits are out there. It comes in at a little less than $70. It is beautiful. You can see that it's handsome and it is going to be one that will hold lots and lots of contents. Your kit will include not only the book, but I gave you a template to do the back binding, so you don't have to do all the measuring to figure that cut out. <clears throat> I die cut this piece for you. This is um, that, um, what's it called? The oval, decorative oval. This is the die we gave away at Christmas for those who had $100 order. And your kit will include the marketplace or the flower market flowers. The only things on this cover that are not, I even included the little label. The only thing on the cover that is not included in your kit are, I put some stamens in around my flowers because I just like the look of the little berries coming out. So if you have some stamen, you can add those from your own collection. And I actually wanted um, a little darker leaves. So I used my um, classic rose leaves and I ran it through the classic, le uh, the classic rose um, folder, uh, the uh, um, flower mold to get some dimension to my leaves. So I made my own leaves but you have leaves in your collection. OK, 
Okay. Your kit will include the book itself. It'll include the flower, uh, the um, corners, two corners. It includes the paper pack. It includes the ephemera, and it includes 10 sheets of black card stock for trimming out your edges. So there we go. That's everything that's included in the kit. Oh, I did include a yard of our black double face satin ribbon. And just like I didn't want the ribbon to pull through the covers on our little squash book, there's actually a piece of chipboard included. I put down chipboard and put my paper on the chipboard, then ran my ribbon under the chipboard so that my so that my ribbon could not pull loose from my cover or tear a hole in my cover. So that's the crafters journal for 2023. They are now up and these would also make a great birthday book for next year. So there we go. Um, I am, now that Margie has seen her tea box, I can put together the, <laughs> the tea box kit. I have everything sitting on the table to do that. So I'll try and get that done in the next couple of days. So we'll get the tea box kit put together for you. Are there any questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom about our squash books? about the crafters album for 2023 the cards everybody say sent were beautiful 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 is there any comment that you would like to share before we get away i hope everybody has a joyous and really happy christmas with family and friends Stay warm out there as the storm hits the whole country. We're going to just stay in and stay cuddled. Because <laughs> it is cold as cold can get, even here in Oregon. We're in single degree wind chill factors. It's 19 degrees now, but we have like 35 mile an hour gusts coming through. So um, the wind chill factor is like single digits right now. <laughs> it's crazy. It's crazy. And it'll be fun and interesting to see the city of Portland get paralyzed with snow over the next few hours. <laughs> We're just staying home. I sent my employees home, said, don't anybody be on the roads after four o'clock. Sent everybody out early. Brittany came early and got the order shipped so Ashley could just go straight from her other job home. And I sent Margie home a while ago so she would have plenty of time to get home before the bad weather hit. So everybody's safe. Oh, my gosh. Montana is 70 degrees below zero. Oh. <laughs> Holy cow. Yeah, we're going to batten down the hatches here. So... Um, we will not be meeting on Saturday since it's Christmas Eve. Um, there will be a sale tomorrow. So you can check out the um, Fab Friday. Fab Friday will list tomorrow. And um, then Sunday, we will still have short quantity Sunday. Even though it's Christmas, I still will put that up. And then... The next time, I, and we'll have $2 Tuesday. The next time I will see you will be What's New Wednesday. So that's kind of a schedule update. Don't wait for a Saturday. We won't be here. <laughs> and uh, I want you guys all to have a just really happy season. And um, we will be back with you next week. If you enjoyed what you saw today, please be sure to hit that like button. It makes me happy and it makes YouTube happy to know that they can refer people to us with confidence. And we will, uh, if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We've got some great things coming up and you will want to 
jump in and chat with these nice ladies. So, okay, if there's no questions, comments, or pearls of wisdom, I'm going to say good night, Gracie. <laughs> Irene says it's always 72 indoors. <laughs> good way to look at it, Irene. <laughs>